So in real life, t-shirt neck trim is typically made with rib fabric, and that means you need to cut it in the shape of a rectangle in order to keep the rib on green. If you cut it in the round shape of your neck, you're going to end up with the lines of the rib being on the bias at some points, and you don't want that. You want the stripes of the rib to always be perpendicular to the neckline. If you cut the rectangle to the exact length of the neckline, it's not going to sit properly at the top edge. It's going to kind of ruffle out. You also want it to help hold the neckline in a little bit. So in real life, the trim is typically undercut, meaning it's cut a little bit smaller than the neckline. So how much you undercut it really depends on your fabric and the width of your neck trim. It might be anywhere between 90 and 98%. Usually it's one to two inches shorter on a standard t-shirt neckline. If you cut it so small that the top edge lies perfectly flat, the trim's gonna be too short and the neckline will gather your garment. So because you can't cut the trim short enough to lie fully flat at the top edge, in real life garment construction, you would use an iron to press and steam the top edge flat. So we can do all of this in Clo, and I'm gonna show you how. I'll start by grabbing my edit pattern tool and measuring my full neckline. The total number will be by your cursor, unless you have symmetric patterns, and then you'll want to look under 2D line length, symmetric line length. Grab your rectangle tool and left click in the 2D background to get the precision box and enter in your numbers. The width will be the length of your neckline and the height will be the height of your trim. Then select your neckline trim and change the particle distance in the property editor to five. This is super important later when we fold the trim. So I like to sew my neck trim on with segment sewing. I click on my trim first and then I sew each segment of my neckline in order. You need to make sure the ticking mark is in the same direction on each piece. I like to keep mine at the front and just imagine you're sewing around the actual neckline in order. Here it looks like I sewed my shoulder seam as well, but I was actually just hovering over it when I let go of shift. After sewing, you can right click on your pattern in 3D and choose superimpose side. For some reason, my superimpose options aren't showing, which I find is an occasional bug. They should always show up once something has been sewn. Um, I'm keeping this in to show you an alternative solution. It's not always ideal, but you can use arrangement points for a neck trim as well. You just wanna make sure you select the point that puts the seam in the correct place. So I decided to put my seam in the right shoulder. So I'm selecting the arrangement point on the left shoulder, the opposite side. You can see it wraps the trim around his neck a bit more than I want. So just to be safe, I froze the whole garment before simulating. I can see right away that my neck trim is longer than my neckline because it looks gathered. That just means I made an error when I entered the length. I remeasured and found that I had a typo in the number. I usually like to sew the neck trim closed after it's on the garment. When you're superimposing in Clo, it's ideal to only have the sewing applied that you want Clo to reference for the superimposing. It should still work, but Clo can get confused if there are too many sewing relationships going on, so I just make that my workflow to be safe. Now you need to use transform pattern, not edit pattern, to shrink your pattern. You want to double click that center pivot point so that it shrinks evenly from both sides, and then you can change it by percentage. The reason you want to use transform pattern is it's the only one that gives you the percentage option. So I'm going to put mine at 92%. Um, just based on a reference I had, but I found later on, you'll see at the end of the video, that it's actually probably a bit too small. So it, like I said before, it just depends on your fabric and your trim height. To put the trim on fold, I'm going to use Edit Pattern and right click on the top edge. I choose Offset Pattern Outline. I'm going to extend the trim the same as the height, so basically doubling it. You can choose perpendicular in the dropdown and make sure you check the box to create internal line. In 3D, you need to make sure your internal lines are visible. You need to grab your edit sewing tool and extend the sewing on the sides of the neck trim. When you offset the pattern outline, it doesn't do this automatically. Then you can use fold arrangement to fold the trim at the center line. With fold arrangement, you always want to be conservative, so make sure you're not folding it so far that you begin to see the backside of the pattern coming through. 
just past a 90 degree angle is fine. This is when you really want to be sure that your particle distance is set to 5. Then you're going to segment sew the trim together at the top and bottom and make sure you turn the sewing. I also like to check fold rendering on for the fold line. You'll see without the fold line it has shadows that make it look less crisp and sometimes a bit weird. On some folds you may also decide to delete the fold line entirely, but that's going to make it really round at the top edge. I only ever do this for rolled collars. You may decide you want to decrease the collision thickness on the pattern if you think it looks a bit puffy, so I'm putting mine down to 0.5. The last thing to do is grab your steam tool. You're going to set the shrinkage pretty low. I suggest like 2 or 3%. Um, and then the size is going to be the size of your iron. So just make sure that it's not so big that you iron more than just the center line. If you get any on the top and bottom edge, it's going to pull in your neckline on your shirt. The reason that I do a small amount is it's easier to just continue to add rather than to take away like a little bit at a time. You can basically only remove all steam or maybe you can edit undo. So I'm just conservative and then I do mine, you know, anywhere from two to five times and I simulate in between every time just to see what it's looking like. Don't make the mistake of over steaming it, trying to get the trim to lie perfectly flat against the avatar. Remember that your garment's not in high res yet. So your avatar has a skin offset of three millimeters. So the trim's always going to look like it's sitting a little bit away from him. For a final evaluation, you should really put the garment in high res using the high res garment button. I can see on my garment when it gets to high res, there are some drag lines and rippling at the neck, which is what tells me that my trim is too short. So I actually think I steamed it properly at the top, but that the trim itself should be longer and then it would lie much flatter to his neck.